Hey everybody. What I've got for you today is a review of the brand new Sugarbite synth Cyclop. Now, when it comes to the synthesizers that I use, I have a very zen minimalist approach because I would much rather know a couple of synthesizers in depth and really have mastered all of their parameters and features rather than have kind of this surface level, very basic understanding of a whole bunch of synthesizers. So with so many different VSTs and plugins on the market all the time, I feel like very, very seldom does a brand new one come into play that actually offers something unique and different. And that's why I chose to take a look at the new Sugarbite synth and why it's made it into my plugin library. So let's take a couple minutes and I'm gonna give you an overview of the features and just take you kind of under the hood and show you the inner workings of Cyclop so you guys can make up your own mind if it's something that would interest you in your plugin library. Let's take a peek inside, shall we? At its core, Cyclop is a monophonic bass synthesizer. Monophonic means that it can only play one note at a time as opposed to chords and multiple pitches. And although bass is not the only thing it can be used for, it definitely is a formidable tool in that area. Now, if you imagine dubstep and an arcade game getting together and having a digital love child, it would not be unlike Cyclop. If you take a look at the most prominent feature here, which is the wobble knob, it allows Cyclop to have all these very complex wobbling modulations. And then the whole interface has a very video game feel to it, all the way down to this area, where if you click the Cyclop logo, you actually have an arcade game built in that will help you to preview different sounds and entertain you perhaps in between your production sessions. Everything with Cyclops starts down here in the bottom left corner, where you have the two synthesizers, or sound generation engines. What I'm going to do to demo this for you guys is just start with one of the initialization patches, the saw regimen. And I'm going to turn off the second synthesis engine, as well as both the filters and any modulation that's happening, so we can just hear the actual synthesizer. So the saw regimen is a combination of seven different saw waves that are slightly detuned from each other for fatness. It's effectively a super saw oscillator. So if we turn this knob up, you see it starts to fatten out the sound. Now the sound's taking a long time to decay, so I'm just going to turn down our master envelope release knob. You'll also notice that there's a digitized knob here, which tears apart the sound by adding in some sample and bit rate reduction. If you look down at the bottom of the synthesizer, there's a master detuning and there's a unison knob. Simultaneously, there are four unison voices generated by one of these synthesizers, and you can turn the unison knob up to increase the level of unison effect. You'll also notice there's a convenient selection tool here where you can notch it down an octave or up an octave so you can really dial in exactly where you want the synthesizer in your bass range. Next up is our analog sync synthesizer, which gives you two analog oscillators with sync controls. You can select different waveforms for the master and the slave, control the mix between them, dial in some nice sync. That's a good one to modulate. And we also have pulse width controls. The FM synthesizer is, as you may have guessed, an FM synthesis engine. You have three operators here. These are the frequency controls, and then you have ratio controls for each one down here, and you can set them up in series or parallel. The transformer synthesizer is one of my personal favorites. It combines a kind of a wavetable and granular synthesis engine together, where you can select from different waveforms down here. And you have formant control, which gives you a very vocally effect. You can scan through in the position of the sample. And you have control over your grain size. They even have some special vocal samples that are already loaded in here that will give you some really great possibilities. <laughs> The Spectromat is another favorite. It's more of an additive synthesis engine where it has 32 individual waveforms and added up together, they can make for some really nice fat sounds. You have a chooser down here where you can select the actual waveform of each one of the partials from sine through square through sawtooth. 
The spectrum knob allows you to dial in the actual offset of each one of the partials by up to five semitones. The shape knob applies fairly radical EQ curves or amplitude curves over top of the individual partials. And the shift knob will move the entire thing up or down in your frequency spectrum. And last, but certainly not least, is the phase stressor, which is a very unique form of synthesis engine where it takes a sine wave and basically will massively modulate and distort it. It has the ability to self-modulate and the symmetry knob controls the phase symmetry of the oscillator. Now I should point out that over here we actually have a third oscillator, the sub oscillator. And being a bass synthesizer, it's handy to have that feature to be able to add some nice pure sine wave in underneath the other sounds. I use this primarily when the synthesizer 1 and 2 are being used to generate mid and high range sounds and there's actually not a lot of bass within them. You can use the sub bass to inject a pure sine wave underneath. You have frequency control over it, you can pitch it down or up an octave and control the level. And what this sub oscillator does is it completely bypasses the filters and effects section to give you nice solid low bass. If we move over to the bottom right, you'll see we have two filters and a routing module. In the routing module we can set it to split mode where each one of the synthesizers is routed through its own filter individually or we can set them into a variety of parallel and series modes. We have a whole arsenal of filter types to choose from all the way from the more standard waveforms up to some more interesting ones like the ripple filter. You'll see familiar cutoff, resonance, and dry wet mix controls up top. Now, one of the very strong points about Sugarbytes as a company has been their dedication to developing very sound mangling capable vowel filters. So with each filter you'll notice you can put it into vowel mode and your cutoff knob changes into a morph knob where you can morph between different vowel sounds. <laughs> Very useful for that talking bass effect. Up next to the sub oscillator, we have one of the most important sound shaping parameters. We have nine distortion modules we can choose from. I've selected a different patch here just to demo this for you. A bunch of different modes. One of my favorite is digitize. It sounds very lo fi. And up top, we've got these two juicy little parameters, which help us to really dial in our bass. The bass knob will provide a boost between 60 and 80 hertz, while simultaneously cutting around 225. The stereo knob will help to add some really nice wideness to our sound without sacrificing the sub range. What it does is it'll divide the frequencies into separate bands all the way from 250 hertz to about 4000 hertz and then does some mid side processing on them while leaving the extreme upper and lower ranges completely pass through. Now let's get into modulation. At its heart, Cyclop is a modulation monster. If we go to our center screen right here and click on this tab, these are our standard modulation sources. You'll notice we have an envelope, we have an LFO, and we have a step sequencer. Now these are our modulation sources. If we click down here, you'll be able to see our modulation assignments page. And here we can select our targets for our modulation. So let's say, for example, we want to apply an envelope to something. We can control our attack and hold, decay, sustain, release times. Then we click on the assignments page. We click on envelope, and you'll see here some assignments are made. We have synth 1, synth 2, filter 1, and filter 2. And if you hover your mouse in any one of these areas, you can see in the upper right, there's actually a little info view area that tells you which target this is able to be assigned to. So as a quick example, I've got a couple of transformer synthesis engines here. And let's say we want to take the envelope and have that modulate as destinations some of these guys over here. Maybe the formant on one. And the grain size on the other. So if we go to our envelope, you'll see on synth one, if we hold our mouse over top of here, you'll see we have parameter one, which is formant. 
So we turn that up. And let's take a look at our envelope and let's take the attack time. Sustain all the way up to the top. Okay, we go back to our assignments page and we go to Transformer 2. And let's take a look. We're going to be looking for the grain, which is the third parameter. And yeah, we want something like that. And then we've got some basic assignments. We can do the same thing with our LFO or step sequencer page. Anybody who's done any sound design and synthesizers before should recognize these. But these are not the real special aspects of this synth. So the real magic starts to happen when you get up into our four knobs that we have over here. Let's start with the sound knob. The sound knob you can think of very much like a macro knob, and you can have it control many different sound destinations. So if you click on sound right here, you'll see we have the same destination assignment matrix as we do with everything else. So we could have the sound knob, for example, control our filter frequency on filter one. If we take the cutoff down a little low, let's take filter one, parameter one is cutoff. And we can move that knob up. Now, this knob and any of these other knobs also have recordable automation on them. You can see with this play icon. So if I click that off, then I'll just have manual control over it. By the way, any one of these knobs has very easy MIDI mappable functions. You right click on it, you go learn. I'm just going to turn a knob on my controller. And here we go. But like I said, it has recordable parameters on it here. So if we click record, we can actually record a movement and it'll play back for us. So you can see here we've recorded in a movement and that's on this tab right here. And if we click play, it'll play over again for us. If we want it to stop, we just click the play button again. Now the nice thing about this sound knob is you can control multiple parameters at exactly the same time. So let's say for example we want to control the position of our transformer synthesizer 2. Do something like that. We can set the position knob out here. We can go back to our assignments page and this will be on synthesizer 2 and the position knob is parameter 2. So we can take it like this and play. All kinds of amazing sound mangling possibilities with this guy. Now what you've all been waiting for, the infamous wobble knob. Just taking a look at this, it gives you some very very innovative modulation possibilities. Obviously it's been inspired by the whole advent of dubstep but it's not all it can be used for. So let's give a quick overview of Mr. Wobbler here. First of all, you'll notice that you can turn it up, and as it turns up, you get tempo synced rates. Now, at each of the different rates, you also have the ability to choose from waveforms. So rather than a standard LFO, where you could sweep the rate, but you would be sweeping on the same waveform, at every different rate point, you have complete control over what type of waveform you're using. You can randomize things by clicking this button up here, or you can manually select every single one of the waveforms just by clicking in each one of these boxes. So let's demo what the wobble knob sounds like. First of all, I'm going to deactivate filter 2 and we're going to have it modulate filter 1. So I've deactivated what the sound knob is doing with filter 1 and now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to route our filters such that we will only be hearing filter 1 and both of the synthesizers are going through it. <laughs> So we all know that the core of a lot of wobble sounds is filter modulation. I know it's kind of cliched, but it's the easiest way to demo this for you guys. So what I'm going to do is click on the wobble amount here. And what we're looking to do is filter one cutoff frequency. And let's see how this sounds. You'll notice that when I apply modulation that we light up the middle of the knob here and it indicates which the modulation source is. <laughs> Back off the cutoff a bit. So very different modulation sound than a standard LFO.
If one wobble knob wasn't enough, Sugarbytes added two. We actually have wobble knob A and wobble knob B, which we can select here. And this control right here allows us to select and actually morph between wobble knob A and wobble knob B. And you can see we can actually record modulation or automation onto this guy as well as this one. So we have a lot of different modulation possibilities with Cyclop. But what it sounds like when we modulate more than just the filter cutoff frequency though. <laughs> For any of you who are familiar with Sugar Bites, you'll know that they're famous for pattern-based effects sequencers like Effectrix, and they have kindly built one of those right into Cyclop for us. And that is what this effects knob in the upper right-hand corner is for. So if we click right here on the effects sequencer, you'll see we have a grid. And in each one of these positions, we have the ability to click and drag up and add different types of effects. Now, you'll see once we click and we add an effect, it appears right here and the knob position will determine which effect is being played. You'll see the little green bar down here indicates the knob position so if we want a dry signal we can have no effects in this row right here but we have a phaser over in the second area and then maybe up here we apply a turntable stop effect. We move over to the third one we have looping effects Let's just add some more. And just like with the other knobs, we can actually record automation on here. Now you'll also notice that we have a gator up top and we have a clock which is 30 second notes and you can simply click to remove little pieces to get more of a stuttered effect. Before we wrap up this video, I want to give you guys a little demo of what Cyclops sounds like in context. So I've created a little demo track here, and I've created a whole bunch of instances of Cyclops, each running one of the preset sounds. And I've programmed little pieces of bass lines here to give us a nice call and response feel. And this will give you a, kind of a picture of how Cyclops would sound in action and how you might want to use it in some of your tracks. <laughs> So that's a brief introduction to Cyclop. It's not an exhaustive tutorial on all of its features and everything that it can do in detail, but if you keep an eye on my channel, I will be publishing over the next uh, couple weeks some sound design tutorials in Cyclop where I actually build patches from scratch. So if you guys want to learn a little bit more about its in-depth features and check out more of what it can do, just keep an eye on my channel here and you'll see more videos coming up. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys real soon. Take care.